your boy Charlie Bahama and we are back on for a brand new season and I'm excited about this season because I'm gonna be your minister of culture that's right I'm aiming for your oh thank you Hornsworth no it's Kevin I'm your guest today Charlie thank you Hornsworth so I am so excited because I have an amazing guest on today my real guest, Kevin Taylor, who's a filmmaker, and actually we have history because he was a cameraman for my first show, Electric Air, and so many other films he did, and actually even a cameraman on this show when we we're throughout the Bahamas. And we have popcorn today because as you can see, we're in my virtual theater. We're gonna be talking about Kevin's new film about an amazing musician, Bohemian musician that I know a lot of you probably don't know about. That's why we're gonna talk about it here on the show. And also, I'm your Minister of Culture. This entire season, I'm gonna be your Minister of Culture. I'm gonna be aiming for the, the new government to try and get a Ministry of Culture separated so a Ministry of Culture exists, because we really need that, all right? So come on back, Kevin Taylor and the amazing Fred Ferguson will be on the Charlie Bahama Show, all right? Come on back. Mm. The Charlie Bahama Show will be right back. Keep up with all things Charlie Bahama by following Charlie Bahama on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get behind the scenes access to Bahamian and international celebrities, along with travel info, tips, photography, and video. Like, share, and follow Charlie Bahama on all social media platforms. And subscribe to our Charlie Bahama YouTube page to catch up on all past episodes and bonus clips. You can also go to charliebahama.com anytime. We always keep the lights on. The Charlie Bahama Show. All that same flair with a little less hair. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to the Charlie Bahama Show. And as promised, my good friend, my buddy, who is not only my cameraman from way back we worked together, but also, and I have some clips I'm going to show through here. Remember when I was doing Electric Air, I had the movie Minute? And yes. You, we put you on. I remember the movie Minute. You sent me out to the theater, and I'd watch the movies and uh, do a little uh, review. Yeah. So maybe I was the one who put the spark in you being a filmmaker? If, if it wasn't for Charlie, I, I wouldn't be where I am now. <laughs> He'd be much higher. <laughs> I, I've held him back like a weight. But anyway, Kevin Taylor is here. So not only is he amazing behind the camera, also in front of the camera, but a filmmaker. So me doing these little fluffy little silly TV shows, he's, he's like very, you know, uh, filmmaker. Mm. Where's your scarf? Oh, I forgot my ascot. Yes. Mm. Oh. Anyway, and he's also responsible for my virtual theater here. He's like, we have to do a virtual theater and we'll show mm. you what it really is at some point. I'll show you what's really here. But that's the magic of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. That's Kevin Taylor. So Kevin, what really sparked you um, with being a filmmaker? I mean, like, was this something you always wanted to do or did TV get you into filmmaking? Um, when I was younger, uh, in high school and uh, college, I was able to make projects, uh, make videos for, uh, for my projects to hand in. And even though it wasn't as much writing pen to paper, I was working harder than a lot of my classmates on some of these things. So I did some science fiction things and some uh, environmental projects for different classes. But when I went to college, I got more on the radio side of things. And uh, I didn't really think of filmmaking as someone's job. I just thought this filmmaking was for these extraordinarily gifted people that you know, didn't even live on Earth, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then I started getting into television and I started working with you early on and doing uh, you know, electric air and had a good time doing that. But as my career progressed a little further, I started doing documentaries on my own. I did a couple of short ones for uh, local te television. And then eventually the uh, Bahamas government commissioned me to do a few of them. I did uh, the one on Andre Rogers yeah. with Gina Seeley. Gina, yeah, Gina Rogers Seeley, amazing, amazing and film. I did another one on uh, Michael Thompson, the mm -hmm. first uh, Bahamian basketball yeah. player. 
and uh, we're working on one for Peanuts Taylor, mm -hmm. which you know about. And so um, I've always enjoyed telling these stories. And when I got the opportunity to pitch to Cable Bahamas this story about um, Joseph Spence, uh, the legendary Bahamian guitarist um, that unfortunately not a lot of people know about here. Right. Um, David they Burroughs. They will now, thanks they will to now. you and Fred. Yeah. So um, David, Burroughs was, was, uh, David Burroughs from Cable Bahamas was uh, a fan of Spence also. And he saw the value in telling this story. So uh, Fred is my narrator and co-producer. And the two of us uh, worked together um, the end of last year, beginning of this year, to, uh, to get it done. And I think it's a pretty good project. Yeah. It's so good to have David at Cable because David is an, an actor. He's, you know, he's a culturalist himself. He's amazing. So he makes sure we get these Bahamian TV shows. That's why there are so many great Bahamian TV shows on our TV. Um, and also, you know, uh, films like yours out mm -hmm. there. And Fred, who we'll be talking to uh, in the next segment or two, um, everybody knows him from the Baja Men, High mm -hmm. Voltage before that. And also, he's the one who wrote my amazing theme song. Anything I do with music or Bahamian music, I'm like, yo, Fred, because mm -hmm. he is it's a genius, right. a genius. And, and that's why he recognized the genius in Joseph Spence. For sure, and, and Spence, um, was, uh, I see you have your Jimi Hendrix shirt on here. That's why I have it. Well, this is not a Bahamian guitarist, mm -hmm. but Joseph Spence was like, like people all around the world, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, he was kind of the Bahamian uh, Jimi Hendrix, a, a folk artist at a very, uh, in, you know, early uh, in the last century, you know, throughout the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, he was recognized worldwide for his technique and his style. Um, but was relatively unheralded here in the Bahamas, so um, we were glad to tell this story about him. You know, he wasn't discovered until he was in his 40s in Andros. Um, the wow. Smithsonian happened to be going on a uh, fact-finding or, uh, or music-finding mission and heard who they thought was three guitarists playing on this construction site, and they went around the corner, and they saw it was just one guy playing all these three parts of guitar um, by himself. So it's a, it's a great story, and I'm looking forward to um, Bahamian seeing and hearing about this guy. So when we come back, we'll talk about one of your favorite moments in making this film, sure. and uh, and we'll show some clips. So here's a clip of what, what's the what's the film called? Oh, it's called Joseph Spence, the virtuoso from Small Hope. All right. Despite his popularity with guitar players all over the globe, he is relatively unknown and definitely unheralded here in his home country. His name is Joseph Spence, and I'm going to tell you his story. Joseph Spence is one of the most unique persons that God has put on the earth. There's nothing strange and idiosyncratic and crazy about him except his genius. Who is this Joseph Spence? He was deemed a genius. You know, I've never heard about him before. I did not know anything about Joseph Spence. Who is Spence? I don't know no Spence. <laughs> <laughs> Bahamians have no idea who this person is and how big he is. Joseph Spence is my musical hero. I said, I think you're the best guitar player I ever heard. He went, ah! He could, he could make the give that talk. Joseph Spence has a cult following. He is so spectacular. That can't be just one person playing. The Charlie Bahama Show will be right back. Hey, welcome back to the Charlie Bahama Show, and we are here again with Kevin Taylor, a filmmaker, Cameraman, uh, friend, on air. I mean, even radio. You've done radio as mm -hmm. well. So you, you're, you've done a We did lot. radio together for a little yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. Um, so you've done just about everything. But and, and also, you know, we talked about those other films, uh, you know, that you did um, with Sweet Bells, Michael Thompson, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Andre Rogers. But also, we worked together on Pigs of Paradise. That's a film I did. So Kevin... Uh, shot with me on that. So mm -hmm. all the, the really amazing shots that you see in that, that was me, the rest were him. I helped out. Uh, yeah. 
And um, but you also had other short films. Remember what was the one on the boxer? Yeah, I did a, a movie called Choo Choo Meets Marvelous. Uh, mm -hmm. I shot that, um, and I got really into Bahamian boxing, and I um, I got to learn about the you know the boxing community here and its various characters, including mm -hmm. the Minus family and everyone like that, and. Um, Followed this young kid, uh, Choo Choo Mackey, Jermaine Choo Choo Mackey. Followed him around for a couple months as he uh, went for the Bahamas super middleweight title mm -hmm. and uh, documented his training and everything getting ready and all the way up to fight night and, and the fight. And fortunately, he won, for, fortunately for him and, for the, the film, and for the yeah. film. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and that film went on to some festivals and I traveled around uh, North America a little bit and it won some local prizes and yeah. things like that. So it was. That was Fun a good to do. Film. Yeah. yeah. So what about with this film? Because you you also play guitar. I mean, you're not, you know, uh, up to I'm no uh, Joseph Spencer or yeah. Jimi Hendrix. Or Fred Ferguson. Fred no, Ferguson no. is like is like the Joseph Spencer of today. Mm -hmm. Um so what of this film when you were doing this, what did you learn about Joseph that you didn't know and like just really maybe surprised you um, doing this film? Well, you mentioned I play guitar and I had heard of Spence, uh, but only here. I'd never heard of him, you know, when I lived uh, abroad. But people would talk about Joseph Spence, and I'd seen artists with their drawings and renderings of Spence and some old photographs, but I never really heard him play. I didn't know how influential he was to Bohemian music and how a lot of the licks he does, a lot of the licks in his songs, right. um, Ronnie Butler replicated, and that went to, you know, from Ronnie to, to Fred also and to more contemporary guitarists, how they were influenced by him. And while Joseph didn't create his own music, right. he played a lot of hymns and spirituals right. and traditional music. So he didn't compose, um, you know, original right. music, right. but he had his own Bahamian twist on, mm -hmm. on music. That, and that's what made it so um, unique unique and interesting and, and uh, a puzzle for anybody that would listen to him because um, it's not music that you would hear right away and like because there's so many layers to his, his, um, his style. Mm -hmm. So this is why his music has been studied for uh, a couple of generations all around the world. And in our film, we have people in uh, Germany, in Spain, in Japan, all playing Spence licks that they've learned from his rec old records or on YouTube, uh, you know, with anything they've uh, heard of him. And mm -hmm. it's just been eye-opening to me how revered and, and loved this man is and his style all around the world but not really that appreciated here in his, his home country. Yeah, well, I, I think that's something we've seen throughout our history in the Bahamas. We tend to like other people's stuff more. And it, it's a, it's a top-down thing, I mm -hmm. think. I mean, it's both ways, but I think that's why I'm pushing this whole season for a separated ministry of culture, because we need to recognize how important culture is to our are, you know, the, the, the fabric of ourselves. It, it, mm -hmm. it, and not only that, people from around the world love it. We, we don't understand how much they love our culture, okay? And so we need to appreciate it, and, and that's why it's good that you are making this film, Fred Ferguson's making this film, that, that uh, David and, and RTV is airing this film, mm -hmm. and it's up to us. We have to put pressure on the Ministry of Culture, <laughs> it's not here yet, but the government to form a Ministry of Culture. Mm -hmm. It's super important. All right. And another thing is Kevin really is my cameraman as well. So there ain't nobody manning these cameras. So that's I have probably, to go back and see how we do. No, no, it, it's probably much crisper without you touching the camera. That's true. <laughs> probably looks better without me touching much it. Much better without anybody touching it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll show you some more clips of Joseph Spence, the documentary. And then we'll be back with Fred Ferguson. While Bahamians may not have seen the artistic value of Joseph Spence, folk music fans and other musicians were blown away by this middle-aged Bahamian who showed up on their scene. If it wasn't for Joseph, Rai Kudu would not have the, the, the particular style that he's got. And, and so many people try to copy Rai Kudu and in his economy and his harmony. And, so, and he says quite openly, you know, well, Joseph Spence. Joseph Spence is a, a great uh, genius on the guitar, lives in the Bahamas. He's a bricklayer down there, plays guitar for a hobby. Probably the finest uh, primitive musician in the world today. <clears throat> Sometimes he comes to the United States and does concerts. Most of the time he, he'd rather stay home, I think, though. 
follow Charlie Bahama on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or go to charliebahama.com. Hey, welcome back to the Charlie Bahama Show. And as promised, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Fred Ferguson in the house. What's up, Fred? Charlie, I'm doing all right, brother. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. And, and as I've told you guys before, Fred is the man behind the Charlie Bahama theme song, which I'm sure this is his greatest accomplishment to date. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. This man is super, super uh, talented. I mean, there's so much that he's done in the Bahamas. And Fred, this whole season, I'm just, you know, talking about forming the Ministry of Culture separately. So for now, I'm the de facto Minister of Culture, but the people like you who should really be the Minister of Culture and so many people I'm going to have on this whole season. But Fred is originally high voltage, which became the Baja man. And then he went off. Uh, well, I wouldn't say on his own because he's always been doing stuff on his own, working with the likes of Ronnie Butler. I mean, every great you have been, you've worked with and uh, been behind or, and, and learned from. Who, who, who um, inspired you? Obviously, we're talking about uh, Spence in this, you know, this amazing film. But who else inspired you? Well, if you're talking from a guitar player standpoint, um, Spence definitely. Um, Flash Rogers, who played with Ronnie Butler. You know, he would have been very instrumental in the style that I've adopted because recognizing that I grew up on the Family Islands, which has radio. So Mr. Carter, Charles Carter would have played a lot of Ronnie Butler, a lot of Joseph Spence. And those, those guitar players specifically would have influenced me as it relates to production. And, and you know, when I joined High Voltage, Zaya took me to school, Isaiah Taylor, to get me lessons on how to be in a band. As it relates to production, I worked with Kendall Stubbs mm -hmm. when we were producing the Baja Men's Project. So that gave me another um, direction in production. So those three influences, if you put, if you had to pick top three, those will be it. Wow. Yeah, you, you have such an amazing background of people. But let's move to Joseph Spence, which is this is all about. And, you know, Kevin Taylor, who I spoke to earlier, you know, I'm so happy that he made this film. I'm so happy Cable... Uh, Bahamas is, is airing this, but I, I watched this. I had the privilege of watching this already, and people are going to be seeing, you know, parts of this throughout this episode. But you are an amazing storyteller yourself. I love the way you weave the story together. So tell me why Joseph Spence is so important to you. Well, I just want to say it was a wonderful opportunity to work with Kevin. Kevin, Kevin and I worked seamlessly on this project. Um, his, his skills behind the camera, his production skills. And, you know, he, he basically wrote the script. We kind of worked through it together. But Spence, for me, like I said, I was introduced to him when I was growing up in, in Atlas and Crooked Island. And surprisingly, there were other guitar players in, in my neighborhood who played that same style of music. Um, but Spence just brought something special to the table. And I've been, I've been in awe of what he's been doing from then. And I'm still trying to understand what he what he does now. Um, but the fact that we were given the opportunity to bring to life his history as it relates to our own community, because he is world known and everyone else knows him. But at home, we have done a poor job of recognizing who he, who he really is and was. And so now this, pro this project that we were able to work on is gonna give Bahamians and hopefully in the wider world, an opportunity to see how we see Spence from our eyes going to Andros, looking at his homestead, speaking with people from Andros, speaking to family members. And so I'm really excited about whenever this is gonna be aired. I'm starting to get worried that it was not gonna be aired, but it's gonna be aired now and that's really cool. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about that as well. And you know, being that I did Electric Air, I, I knew a bit about Spence as well. And, and mainly I say through you too, you, you have always been a, a, a loud voice for Bahamian culture. And, uh, and that's another thing I'm hoping, you know, that we get uh, the Ministry of Culture. This, this may be our time. I know we've been, I mean, you've been talking about it way before me, but, you know, I've been saying it for, for years as well. And there's people like Pam who, you know, on this. Um, I think it's high time we get a, a Ministry of Culture. You know, what, what do you think on that? I think it's, it's long overdue. And, you know, and I say this all the time to myself and I say it to others that I am grateful, although I had no control over it, the, the era that I was born into. I came in at the time when 
Spence and they were still influential. I was able to go through the period when it's from analog to now digital. The fact that we're now doing interviews this way. Um, but during that journey, I was able to move from island to island, blessed by my parents being teachers and understanding what the real meaning of culture is. It's not, it's not minimal or myopic as we have it now, as people would say, Jankanu is our culture. It's broader than that. Right. It's everything, the fact that you are able to sit with those flowers around you there, those flowers have specific cultural connotation. Um, the fact that we speak different dialects on every island, the fact that Acklands probably make flower cake a, a little bit different than Cat Island. The mm -hmm. fact that Junkanoo is a celebration. It would used to be in the family islands when I was growing up, we wore cardboard faces and went to our neighbors and got food to now where it's now a, 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 a competition. But all those rooted cultural things are embedded in me because I was fortunate to grow up in an era and grow up in, a, in some places that makes me knowledgeable enough and and, and, and willing enough to really preserve it. And so a ministry of culture has to be defined to be that culture and not minimalizing to musicians and to Junkanoo. It's too broad. And so because of the broadness of it all, I think it should be the umbrella ministry for our governance, where everything is, is offshoot from. And I think by now it needs to have its own ministry. And if it's gonna be tied anywhere, Charlie, I'll tie it to the ministry of tourism Mm -hmm. Because tourism should be the promotion of right. everything that we do culturally. Right, right. No, you, you're 100% right. They should work hand in hand. Tourism should tell culture, hey, this is what people seem to like. Can you give us more of that so we can show it to them? But I don't want to tie to it. I just want them to be sisters. Um, but I have a very, very important question. Um, so you're going to have to think long and hard. Flower cakes, Acklands or Cat Island? Which one is the best? I bought an <laughs> Acklands. Oh, so you like Acklands. I, the first time I had flower cake was in Cat Island. So when I went to Acklands and they was taking me for flower cake, I said, oh, I thought it was only in Cat Island. No, so man, I guess I just, you, use, there's use so Acklands. Many things that make our country so rich that I don't understand why we don't get to, to see that the money that we're looking to make, the build for our economy is in the orange economy. Mm -hmm. It's in the arts, but it's mainly in our culture. We have so many things to share. A mm -hmm. trip to Crooked Island should, is, will be enough to, to be fantasy for a visitor. A trip to Cat Island, even the stories about the chick journey and mm -hmm. all the OBS stuff, that's stories that we can tell and build. Yeah. There's so many cultural things that we have that is so wonderful as a nation. We need to wake up and capitalize on them before we go further in, into whatever we're going into now. Well, Fred, man, listen, I appreciate you for everything you do for the Bahamas and music and, and also this film. We're so excited. I'm going to show clips of the film for others to see. And, of course, uh, hopefully you guys out there will have watched it on our TV. And hopefully our TV, please, our TV, play it many times so people can see this amazing story of Joseph Spence. Okay? So, Fred, my, my friend, you know, obviously we, we talk all the time. So until next yes. time, I can have you on again for some other cultural thing you could be doing, all right? Anytime. I appreciate you, brother. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not living in my home country. I'm in Alabama now, but I'm anxious. And if they'll afford me the opportunity, I'll be more than willing to work with, with our Ministry of Culture to do these things that we're talking about. We have a new administration. Maybe yeah. we can get them to see the value of persons like myself who bring that to the table. And as far as relates to speaking with you, I speak with you anytime. Anytime you're ready, we go too far back for me not to yeah, speak. Way so far, way back. I'm always available to you, brother. Well, I can tell you, uh, in terms of flower cake, I, I, I'm with the prime minister because you know he's from Cat Island. So me and him going with the flower cake from Cat Island. <laughs> All right, my friend. You're being very, very politically correct there. <laughs> prime Minister Davis, okay? We Cat Island flower cake, all right? Anyway, so more clips from this amazing Joseph Spence film, and then we'll be right back to end out the show. Thanks to this next generation, Spence's legacy seems secure. But even if none of us ever learn how to play like him, I think in a way that's how Spence would have wanted it. Because there's a Joseph Spence in all of us that wants us to use our own gifts and be inspired to be the best 
version of ourselves, even if we are a little out of tune. Follow Charlie Bahama on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or go to charliebahama.com. And now you know that too. Well, thanks for watching the Charlie Bahama Show this week. It's been amazing just to have Kevin on my show because, you know, we go way back and there's a lot of, you know, uh, history uh, with us in terms of electric air, um, helping me shoot my films, me helping him with his and uh, all of that. And, of course, Fred Ferguson, who's a, a friend forever. And, you know, as you've heard, he is the guy who wrote my theme song, The Charlie Bahama. He's such an amazing uh, musician and composer and just Bahamian. So I'm so happy to have him on and them bringing this amazing story of Joseph Spence to you guys. And also Cable Bahamas, our RTV, for, for airing that film because it's so important that you guys know of all the amazing Bahamians that have, have you know, come through our beautiful land because we are so talented, not only in sports, but in music and, and arts and you know, culture, writing, all of that. All right, so that's why we're going to all aim. I want you guys to write into the government and say, we want a separate ministry of culture. All right, so right until we get that, I'm your de facto minister of culture, even though there's so many other people like Fred Ferguson, that should be our minister of culture. So from my theater to your home, you keep checking me out at Charlie Bahama, okay? And on there, I'm going to give you little, you know, cultural little tips, a little cultural background on the Charlie Bahama all my website, either, you know, charliebahama.com or all my Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Please go to my YouTube at Charlie Bahama channel and subscribe, all right? So we can, you know, stay in touch, okay? Until next time, Charlie Bahama, you stay tuned for more and be safe. Yeah.